Welcome back guys. In today's video, I will be continuing the story of how Goku accidentally got transported into the Naruto-verse. This is a fan manga called Dragon Ball Shippuden but I've changed and rewrote the storyline to fit my way of narration. If you would like to read the official manga, a link to the original creator can be found in the description below. But before we begin, support this video and channel by leaving a like right now as you're watching this to the very end. With that being said, enjoy! Our story continues with Goku firing his Kamehameha directly at Kisame which had managed to catch him off guard. After a last ditch effort, he tried to have Samahata absorb Goku's key blast as he previously did. Unfortunately for him, he realized the hard way that this blast was way beyond his current capabilities to stop. Due to his lack of strength, Goku's Kamehameha had completely ripped through his body. Kisame was down for the count, leaving both Itachi and Goku into believing that he's dead. I didn't want to do this, said Goku, but you left me no choice. After a full minute had passed, the surrounding was quiet, the sky turned pitch black as the wind blew silently. Suddenly the tension was broken by Itachi. Kisame you fool, you didn't listen, I told you to take the fight seriously but you didn't, and now you have paid the ultimate price. A trace of remorse started to flash within Itachi's eyes, his Sharingan lit up as it shines a gleaming light, signaling that a fight was inevitable. However, to Itachi's surprise, a soft injured voice spoke from the same corpse that was previously believed to be dead. Don't bury me so fast. I won't be killed that easily, said Kisame. Goku was stunned, the man he thought to be dead had risen once more. He's alive, what's going on here? said Goku. I watch him die, so how can he be standing there? These so-called ninjas and their tricks, how troublesome. Itachi, shouted an angry Kisame, are you trying to see me get killed? If you sense that his attack was that powerful, why didn't you use your genjutsu on him? If I had died, then there's no way you can reach this month quota, regardless of how strong you are, you can't do it all by yourself. What for, said Itachi. Why should I intervene, if I remember correctly, you said you've got this. Furthermore, the last time I intervened in one of your fights, you made it quite clear that you didn't need my assistance. Kisame was upset but that didn't cover up the fact that his facial expression shows how badly injured he was. With a trace of regret, he spoke. If it wasn't for my regenerative capabilities, I would have been a goner for sure. While looking at the huge wound in the middle of his chest, he turned to Itachi and spoke. Need I remind you that you're the one who insisted on locating this guy? With a face so serious, Itachi stood forth, both calm and collective as he stared down Kisame. After a full five minutes of nothing but arguing, they remembered their previous goal, with the look of business in his eyes, Itachi spoke. This isn't the time for us to be arguing, it's imperative that we stay focused on the task at hand. Now that I have your attention, after fighting him, what are your thoughts and impressions of this fighter? While you both were in full combat, I managed to gather some info based on his fighting style, but I'd like to compare your analysis with mine. Wasting no time, Kisame began to relay the information to Itachi by stating that he believed that Goku has at least twice the amount of chakra than both of them combined, if not more. Kisame goes on to further state that with the huge amount of chakra that Goku possess, he tends to be a bit wasteful. It's as if he believes that his chakra won't run out. That wasn't the only thing Kisame had managed to deduce. He also stated that Goku must be proficient in the art of taijutsu due to his abnormal body muscles and overwhelming speed. Itachi, said Kisame, this guy is very confident in his strength and he isn't afraid of conflict, his outfit has a conspicuous color and he isn't trying to go unnoticed. To the left of Goku, Itachi was listening keenly, he also had come to the same conclusion. Subconsciously, he thought to himself, with the speed this guy have shown, he could stop us at any time, so why hasn't he made a move yet? We must try to finish this quickly before he gets accustomed to our abilities. On the other hand, Goku was watching them both struggling to formulate a plan. He had decided not to attack as he wanted to see what action they would take next. Goku was intrigued and his interest was at its peak. 
Not remembering his initial goal to find Jiraiya, he simply stood and observed the scene. Look at his overconfident face, said Itachi. It's as if he doesn't care about information being exchanged about him. So that's how it is, said Kisame. In his mind, he's already convinced himself that he would be about to counter anything we managed to come up with. This guy really underestimated us. Suddenly the sky began to darken, the clouds spread out fast as a bolt of lightning dropped to the earth. Itachi then looked Goku straight in the eyes and spoke. Stranger, he calls out. Today, you will learn not to underestimate your opponents. Itachi's eyes glistened red. His Sharingan was now fully activated, it was as if he was looking directly at Goku's soul. You better be ready, because now the real fight begins. With not even a moment to react, Goku's mind was trapped in Itachi's Genjutsu. To Goku, it felt instant, he had no time to prepare himself. The earth was completely covered in darkness with nothing to be seen in miles, he looks around with nothing in sight. Suddenly, he began to see all the enemies that he had fought in the past. Frieza was the first villain to appear, followed by Cell then Majin Buu. Despite all of this, it appears that Goku wasn't phased, with a face ever so calm, he spoke. This is definitely a genjutsu, how unfortunate for you bastards. A look of confidence started to appear on the Saiyan's face as he soon then began to speak. If you people had met me before I had the chance to speak with Lady Tsunade, then this trick might have worked, even though I still think I would be able to break free. But unfortunately for you, I've spent a whole week in Konoha, and during that time, Lady Tsunade had taught me a special trick on how to counter Genjutsu. Goku's plan was to inflict self-harm and with that plan in mind he began to punch himself in the face numerous times. However, what he didn't know was that Itachi wasn't your average Genjutsu user. He was the best in the anime, therefore simply harming yourself wasn't enough to break free, which Goku later realized. I thought this would work, said Goku. What can I do now? I guess I have to try the old-fashioned way. Since Goku couldn't perform hand signs, he developed his own method of breaking free simply by raising his key to a high enough input, which will then cause a massive strain on the user. This sudden increase in power had forced Itachi in a corner, if Itachi didn't break his genjutsu, then his chakra would be completely drained. The amount of chakra it would have taken to maintain his genjutsu wasn't worth the risk, so he had no choice but to break it. The first plan has failed, now it was time for plan B. After breaking free, a trace of confidence and pleasure could be seen imprinted on Goku's face. Not even a second after breaking free, his entire body was engulfed in a huge ocean of water. Kisame had seen the opportunity that Itachi had left him, and he decided to take it. Similar to everyone watching this episode at home, Goku was just as stunned as you guys are. I'm underwater, said Goku, how is this even possible? Goku was very surprised by this. At first, he was confused as to how he had found himself in this predicament. However, he realizes that the Genjutsu was simply a means to an end, a distraction that would give Kisame an opening to drown him while he was stuck in the Itachi's Genjutsu. Not only was Goku surprised, he's actually kind of impressed by the tactical thought that was put into this. You bastards knew that this level of technique wouldn't be able to hold me so you had a counter ready from the start. I must say, not bad for a bunch of weaklings. Goku was drowning that the battle was too good for him to die just yet, he was mesmerized by Itachi and Kisami's countless abilities. Incredible, said Goku, I'm inside a water bubble. And that's it for today's video guys. If you enjoy this video, then don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for getting us to 17k subscribers, our goal is still 30k. Share this series with your friends, thanks for watching, more episodes are coming soon. Also check out an original series of the channel that's getting great feedback right now. It's called What If Son Goku Was Locked Inside the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. If you're interested, a link to the full playlist can be found in the description below.